Hi there, I'm Dave Diamond and I'm going to introduce uh, my capstone research project titled The Optimum Size of Welds for Cruciform or T-Stub Joints made by fillet welding with double asymmetric welds. Um, I'm going to report on current progress and the plan going forward. Uh, my supervisors for this project are Chris Roy, Arthur Fang and James Lim from the University of Waikato and my advisors are Hafez Tahiri from HERA, the Heavy Engineering Research Association, and uh, Dinesh Luxman from the University of Waikato. Fillet welding is a popular and common method of uh, welding in industry. Um, a fillet weld is this type of joint here, and um, it happens when you uh, arrange two pieces of steel together like this and you deposit weld metal along the joint and you end up forming a triangular cross section. Um, a fillet weld is sort of described by a leg dimension and a throat dimension across here. Um, it's popular because it's uh, easy to, easier to perform and cheaper than um, a butt weld which is shown in this picture here. Uh, and that's mainly due to the fact that for a butt weld, you need to grind the uh, grind or prepare the edges, uh, which you don't need to do in a fillet weld. So then we come to asymmetric fillet welding. Now, asymmetric fillet welding occurs when you have um, a fillet weld of different sizes on each side of the plate. So, for instance, here in this image, you've got a throat dimension here, which is different to this throat dimension on the other side, or same in this case where the plate is at an angle. Um, so that happens due to um, accessibility. Uh, for instance, when you weld a hollow section, shown in this picture, a tube to an end plate, you can obviously only weld around one side. So that creates a type of asymmetry. Um, in the case of uh, a weld on two sides but being of different thicknesses, that could happen due to fabrication errors. Um, so, and that will cause an uneven stress distribution between the two welds. Um, most literature that I have come across in my literature review was concerned with the effect of single-sided filler welding. Um, and that's because it's sort of ubiquitous in uh, the context of hollow section connections. Uh, this image down here describes the, um, the bending moment that is produced in the weld due to the asymmetry. When a, the plate is pulled here, it has to try to twist this weld over so it causes a tension force at the root of the weld. So my research project is uh, to investigate the effects of double-sided asymmetric fillet welding in uh, T and cruciform joint configurations. Uh, and to do this, I'll conduct a parametric study um, to determine the optimum size of welds based on the thicknesses of various loaded plates. Um, I'll do this using uh, finite element methods. Um, so I'll construct a finite element model and then um, analyze that using the traction stress method. So current progress to date, um, we have, I have so far conducted a comprehensive literature review um, on fillet welding and asymmetric fillet welding and identified the gap in the literature surrounding double-sided asymmetric fillet welding. Um, I've completed finite element training with Dinesh, um, which included modelling the uh, cruciform and T-joint fillet welds and abacus, um, and then calculating, uh, taking the results from the um, finite element models and using the traction stress method to calculate a critical failure plane. The next steps from here are to um, conduct the parametric study uh, and then write my dissertation. Uh, uh, here I've shown my initial proposed timeline um, and the completed items are ticked in green here. Um, the, 
And down here I have my revised timeline for the remaining tasks based on where we're at, based on the current date. So I have got 35 days uh, as of next week to complete the parametric study and then I've got given myself 50 days to write the dissertation uh, to be handed in on the 10th of October. Thanks a lot.